Hello and welcome to this presentation on ANSYS Workbench Mechanical. In this demonstration, we'll use finite element analysis to look at stresses in a somewhat complex single body. Because of cutouts, there will be stress concentrations. We'll note that if we fillet some of the sharp inside corners or re-entrant corners, we ought to be able to reduce the stresses that result. We'll consider meshing settings in order to examine such a model. Here in the Workbench project page, we've set up two static structural systems. We're using the same geometry in each of these. Here you see a model of a hub. As we received it, it had these sharp inside corners. For the purpose of demonstration, we put fillets in with these blends in order to let you look at the consequence filleting these things and getting rid of what might turn into a fracture problem. An alternative design doesn't use these cutouts at all. In this model, features that produced those cutout parts have been removed. However, this has the disadvantage of increasing the overall weight. Let's go look at the model setup. Look at how we've loaded it. We've put a remote displacement here at the very center and created a remote point for that purpose. It's based on this geometry. On the remote point, we've put in a remote displacement and look at what we've constrained. We've inserted a remote displacement. We're preventing movement of the point controlling this face that's colored yellow in X, Y, and Z and we're preventing it from rotating around X and Y. However, we are letting it rotate around that Z. On that remote point, we've placed a moment, and we've given it a value of 10,000 newton millimeters. Then we've put in four compression-only supports on the inside of these holes. Now, the compression-only support is a nonlinear device, and what it does is look at the surface that's here coat it with contact elements, and then fit target elements to those contact elements and set the target elements as rigid targets. So the surface that here is colored in a dark blue can push into an invisible, what you might call tightly fitting pin, tightly fitting target, or it can pull away and open up a gap. It gives a one directional support. Here's how we've meshed this model. We've set body sizing and chosen element sizes so that we would get a mesh of less than 32,000 nodes, which is the limit in the academic package for students. We've requested multi-zone meshing. We've also set some edge sizing on these holes to get a reasonable number of elements around the holes. Here's the consequent mesh in this model. Note that it is a hex mesh. If we go look at the deformation, we see that there's a cyclic symmetry in this model. We can animate that, and you can see what happens as the load goes up. Note the kind of stretching that's happened in these holes, because we have an infinitely stiff target, but we can open up a gap on one side when that torque is applied. A couple of things to note. Our stresses are peaking where these holes are located. This is not a fine enough mesh to give us good information about the kinds of stresses encountered at these holes. Elsewhere in the model, the stresses don't get too bad, although with this sharp inside corner or re-entrant corner, you will get stresses that rise as we raise the mesh density. Let's go look at the model that has the cutouts. We're using the same loads on this model, we have that remote displacement. Note that these cutaways exist. They might have a variety of purposes, one of which would be to lighten the overall model. We've placed fillets in here in order to reduce the kinds of stresses that might cause fracture if there was cyclic loading. This model has been meshed also using a body sizing intended to prevent the total number of elements from going over 32,000. A multi-zone mesh has been created here, and some faces have been selected as a manual source in order to aid in getting a successful multi-zone mesh. 
some face sizing has been done to raise the mesh density. Face meshing has been used here to try to get cleaner rows and columns of elements. And again we've used edge sizing to set the mesh density around these holes. So here's the resulting mesh. Here's our deformation. We don't quite have cyclic symmetry because the one tub had fillets in the inside. We can look at stresses now in the entire model. And once again, the highest stresses are where we've put in these compression-only supports. We can look at stress in these two tubs. Now, when we look at stress in here, the finer we make the mesh, the higher these stresses can be expected to go. But the overall mesh density in the model is not great enough to give really fine resolution to the way these stresses turn out. You'd need to move to a version of ANSYS or a license for ANSYS that would permit a finer mesh density than is seen in the student version. When we go look at where the cutaway fillets were placed, we can see high stresses here, although if I look at the full model, again the mesh is rather coarse and cannot give really high quality stress results in there. That's a deformation, that's a stress. Here's the stress scoped to only these surfaces. It's interesting to look at the force reactions at those compression-only supports. You can see that they work around a circle because we've applied a torque loading a moment up here. To have a more detailed look at stress concentration, once again, would require a different license to use a finer mesh. An alternative that hasn't been looked at here is that you do have cyclic symmetry if you had the fillets in all of these cutaways. And in a cyclic symmetry model, you could go to finer meshing and learn more about stress concentration. Thank you for joining us.